Hello world, I'm Robin Catling and this is Write On. Join me in my author journey as I delve into the craft of writing, with tips, tools and lessons learned the hard way so you don't have to. History, historical fiction and fantasy, what gives? If history is stuff that happened and fantasy is stuff somebody made up, then what's historical fiction? Preamble. History is easy, people say. You look at the records and you know exactly what happened. If that were the case, a certain US president wouldn't have gotten into trouble for the presentation of alternative facts, alternatives that many chose to believe over official records. What goes into the records is often incomplete or, like statistics, requires context and interpretation. And if the official record comes from a totalitarian state, then nobody ever got massacred or run over at a protest by a tank. All history books should come with a warning sticker, subject to interpretation. If they weren't, there would be nothing for historians to argue about, revise or reinterpret. Good history requires three things. Solid research, sound interpretation and the acknowledgement of bias. You might say removal of bias, but it is very difficult to remove all bias for or against a subject. One person's freedom fighter is another person's terrorist. As Monty Python said, what have the Romans ever done for us? Tragical historical. So if all history is flawed, so is all historical fiction. These days it is a respectable and widely read genre. Hilary Mantel and Philippa Gregory sell by the millions. Historical fiction authors interpret, filter and join the dots by imaginative leaps to tell the stories of real people they don't know. It's been going on since the Old Testament, the Talmud, the Quran and other significant texts that are supposedly historical documents, but which have been edited and re-edited, often as in the case with the Bible heavily edited and reinterpreted according to the political and religious agenda of the commissioning editors. There are many historical novels where you question the accuracy of the history parts. Authors may or may not carry out thorough quality research. They may choose to emphasize or ignore certain parts to suit their purpose. When it comes to character, this is an imaginative exercise. The historical person's written words or reported quotes appear, but the interior monologue is pure speculation. The reader cannot judge whether the historical novel is accurate even if they do the same hours of research from the same sources as the author. Experience, agenda and bias get in the way of interpretation. Historians have this problem themselves. It's good for a reputation building bust up with one's peers, I suppose. It's no different from reading multiple biographies of the same person and discovering a totally different character, ascribed with wildly different personality traits and motivations. Getting on with it. So why is historical fiction more respectable than fantasy? If it's because the author can describe Elizabethan needlepoint or Jacobean breadmaking, that's just the product of many hours in the library or on the internet. The portrayal of Anne Boleyn as a floozy or a Protestant martyr, as in David Harewood's play, is still a matter of interpretation. Historical fiction is just that, fiction. It might have the real Battle of Bosworth as its setting, 1485, there you go, I learned something accurate. That may be the sole historically accurate fact in the whole fiction. I learned one true thing, I may now also believe 150 other untrue things mistaking them for history when actually the author made them up. Historical fiction is entertainment. It won't necessarily make me a more knowledgeable person. It might. It might leave me equally worse off. There's a vast amount of speculation dressed up in bonnets and crinolines. I probably can't tell which parts. Just because they wrote it in a letter doesn't make it true. Famous people, important people, ambitious people all have one eye on their legacy when they commit anything to paper. You can beg for an alliance with your best friend right up to the point you stab them in the back. You can claim to be a devout follower just to keep your neck off the block. 
Who really knows, other than the subjects themselves, what someone really believes? All of which is a roundabout way of saying that historical sources can, themselves, be unreliable narrators. The sliding scale of historical doubt and uncertainty is available from no good retailers, sadly. All of which has what to do with fantasy fiction? For me, the fantasy and sci-fi genres are honest. The author declares, I made this up. It's law and history that never really happened. So what? It's primarily entertainment. It may contain a huge slice of satire, as in Gulliver, or political commentary, as in 1984, Fahrenheit 451, in ways that other genres can't tackle. The speculative genres always hold up a mirror to our societies and values in the time they are written. They're an invitation to enter the world of the imagination, to question received wisdom, and learn about values along the way. Take it or leave it, but don't pretend your latest Plantagenet princess is a placid damsel in distress or Lara Croft in a French hood. She was probably neither. Probably. Chapter 1 In a hole in the ground there lived a hobbit. That's all for this time. Thanks for stopping by. You can like and subscribe to the channel for more tips, or visit robincatling.info to check out the blog.